Hi, everyone. Here are your notes. I'm going to take that off. Hi, everyone. Here are your notes for section 2.5, which has to do with set operations and compound inequalities. In section 2.4, you were solving just um, one variable linear, linear inequalities and writing your answers uh, in interval notation. So hopefully you are good to go there. So now we're going to combine those together with intersections and unions. So some new notation that might not be familiar with you is we use a U to represent the union between the set of two numbers or a set of numbers. So A, U, B right here is telling me that I'm taking the union of A and B. So all numbers that are in set A and all numbers are, that are in set B we're going to marry them together, create a union, and put them all together into one big set. An upside down U is used to represent the intersection. So A intersection B means I'm going to take it all the elements in A, all the elements in B, see what they have in common, and that would be my solution set of the intersection. Okay, so what do intersections and unions look like graphically, and then how do we write them in interval notation? So these are just very basic. So let's just pretend I had in two different inequalities. I solved them down and then got to the bare minimum answers, and I had an and in between. So what does that look like? So an and is an intersection. Again, stop this video at any point in time. So that's our intersection. So let's graph each of these inequalities individually. So we have three, I'm going to put that up here at the top. Negative two, put it down here at the bottom. Usually you put your highest number on the right, lowest number on the left on the number line. And now let's think about what these look like graphically. If I want x to be less than three, that would be a parenthesis facing the left and everything to the left. So that pink arrow represents all the numbers that are less than 3, not including 3. That's why we don't have it a square bracket. Now I want to do the other side, which says that I want x to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So I'm going to put a square bracket at negative 2, and I'm going to shade to the right. So because I'm looking for the intersection, I want what values both are in the purple and the pink. So in between, does everybody see how in here is where the, you have the intersection of both purple and pink? So how do we write that in interval notation? Well, my lower bound is negative 2 with a square bracket, and my upper bound is 3 with a parenthesis. So Writing out an intersection will look like this. So when I have my final results of x less than 3 and x is greater than or equal to negative 2, it's going to end up looking like this. Now, I highly recommend that you do graph all of your solution sets for all of these problems because it's going to make it easier for you to find the actual solution. Okay, so let's keep playing, away, playing around with this before we get to actual solving. So let's flip signs, keep it an and. So we're going to do the same exact thing. Here's my number line. Put negative 2 on the left, 3 on the right. So now doing our x is greater than 3, I'm going to have a parenthesis opening to the right, shade to the right. For negative 2, I'm going to have a square bracket facing the left, shading to the left. So because it's an and, I'm looking for the intersection of the pink and the purple. Well, they're not intersecting. They're going in completely opposite directions. So there is no intersection, which means that there is no solution set that can be both greater than 3 and less than negative 2. Okay, so let's manipulate again. Very small manipulation, just flipping the sign at the negative 2. So let's make our graph again, negative 2 on the left, 3 on the right. All right, so at my 3, we're going to have an open parenthesis facing the right. Where am I shading? 
square bracket at negative two again, but this time I'm going to open it up to the right and shade to the right. So now because it's an and, where is your intersection between the purple and the pink? Well, the intersection between the purple and the pink is from three and on. Notice there's no pink right here. So that's not included in my solution set. So my answer in interval notation is going to be parentheses three to infinity. That's why it's very, very important that you graph this out so you can see what it's going to end up looking like. All right, let's do another manipulation. Let's flip the signs and put them to the left. So again, making our number line, we have three here, or sorry, not three there, negative two here, three here. And in our pink, we're gonna have an open parenthesis facing to the left, shade to the left. In the purple at the negative two, square bracket to the left, shade to the left. Where is the intersection? Well, the intersection is happening right here, not right here. So my solution set in interval notation is going to be negative infinity, because that's my furthest left bound. It's going on and on and on and on forever to negative two, which negative two has an equals two sign, so we make it a square bracket. Okay. All right. So hopefully we got our ands down. Now let's talk about our ors, and that should say or up top, not and. We're doing unions now. Let's go ahead and change that. Unions. I just got copy and paste happy, I guess. Change these. Also I have and. Give me a second. I'll make our lives a lot easier. Okay, so back to our ors. So now, again, still using the same number line. Negative two on the left, three on the right. Now when we go to do our shading, at three, we're gonna be open to the right, shade to the right. For our purple, open bracket to the left, shading to the left. Now because it's a or, or an or, we're gonna be doing the union between both the purple and the pink. So how do we do that? Well, how do I do the purple part? How do I do this in interval notation? Well, that is negative infinity to negative two with a square bracket. And then how do I do the right side in interval notation? Well, there I do parentheses three to positive infinity and then we use that U to marry them together. So that U stands for union. So I'm taking the union of one interval and marrying it to the other interval and putting all those solutions together into one big solution. So this means that it could be less than or equal to negative two, or it could be greater than, or not equal to, just greater than three. All right, let's do some manipulation again, flipping some signs around. Here we go. So we have X is less than three or greater than or equal to two. Okay, so back to our pink. Less than three would be this. Greater than or equal to would be this. If it was an intersection, it was an and, I would want what's in between. But this is an or. So if I want purple or pink, wouldn't that just be everything on the number line? Because you have the intersection in between and then you have the tails going all the way out on either side. So because this incorporates the whole entire number line, our final answer is going to be all real numbers. So if you end up with a graph that's an or that's overlapping, it's all real numbers. If you end up with a graph like that and it's an and, meaning the intersection, then it's just the stuff that's in between where they intersect. Ors is everything. Let's do some more manipulation. Let's flip the sign on the x to less than or equal to negative two. See what this looks like. 
So again, on our pink, we're going less than three, so that stays there. Now for my purple, we're going less than or equal to negative two. Okay, so if it was an and, my solution set would be right here where they intersect. But because it's an or, my solution set is everything. So because it includes everything, my lower left bound is negative infinity. And then where is my stopping point for everything? It's up there at the three. So that would be my answer written in interval notation. Because let's think about it. If you're less than three, aren't you then also less than negative two? Yeah. So just by being less than number less than three, it already takes care of already being a number less than negative two. Okay. All right. I guess sorry, I should say it this way. If you're less than negative two, then you're definitely less than three. Right. So if you're a number less than or equal to negative two. It's already safe to say that you're less than three. So that's why if we can go three and below, then it covers both of those intervals. All right, let's flip it. Negative two on the left, three on the right. For our pink, we're going to do this way. For our purple bracket, going this way. So again, here's another one of those scenarios. If it was an and, we would go from three up, but because it's an or, because if we're greater than or equal to three, then we're definitely already greater than or equal to negative two. So my furthest left is negative two, and we're going to infinity. And there's a square bracket on negative two because of the equal sign. Okay, so now hopefully we've got that under control. So now we can actually do some work with this. So let's go to the actual algebra portion. So here's our first compound inequality. We have an and in between. So we have x plus 1 is less than or equal to 9, and x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 3. Pretty easy inequalities to solve for. Subtracting 1 here gets us x is less than or equal to 8. Adding 2 gets us x is greater than or equal to 5. And this is an and. So again, we're looking for the overlap, the intersection. So make a graph. Make a graph, make a graph, make a graph. Put your smallest number on the left, largest number on the right. Do your shading. So less than or equal to 8 is here. Greater than or equal to 5 is here. Because it's an and, we want the intersection, which is right here. So my left bound is 5, and we're going all the way up to 8, both with square brackets, because of the equal to signs. Again, pause this at any point in time to get yourself caught up. I'm going to keep on moving. Let's go ahead and do this one. A little bit more work, two steps needed for these solving Negative 3x is greater than 7. X is make sure you flip your sign when you divide by a negative 3. Over here, we get 5x is less than or equal to negative 20. X is less than or equal to negative 4. Do not flip your sign. You divide it by a positive 5. Just because there's a negative in the problem doesn't mean you flip it. Make a graph, make a graph, make a graph, make a graph. Put your smallest number on the left. Largest number on the right, do your shading. So here we've got this. And then for this one, we've got square bracket and then this. Okay, so this is an and. That means we're looking for the intersection. Where's the intersection happening? Right there. So my furthest left is negative infinity. My uppermost is negative 4 with a square bracket. And that's going to be your solution. Okay, try this one on your own. Hopefully you got an answer of negative 3 to infinity. Working through it. Subtracting 4x. Subtracting 4x gets us negative 2x less than 8. Dividing it out should get you x is greater than negative 4. Make sure you flip that sign. Over here, dividing gets us x is greater than or equal to negative 3. When you make that graph, negative 4 on the left, negative 3 on the right. For my 
shading, I should have something that looks like this. The square bracket in there. So where is my overlap happening? Right there, from negative infinity to, or sorry, negative three to positive infinity. Good. All right, moving on. Here we have x plus two less than five, and x minus 10 is greater than two. Again, pause as needed to get yourself caught up with jotting the problem down. So here we have x is less than three, and x is greater than 12. That's the easy math. So now let's actually get the solution. Three here, 12 there. Do your shading. So there's my shading for the three. What's my shading on the 12 looking like? All right, so this is an and. Looking for the intersection. I don't see an inter intersection, so my answer is there is no solution because there is no intersection. There's no way to, to figure out a number that is both less than 3 and greater than 12. It's not possible, at least in this world. Maybe in some fifth dimension, I don't know. Okay, let's go ahead and do this one. X plus 2 is greater than 5. X minus 10 is less than 5. So I just flipped the signs on you. So we end up with X is greater than 3. And X is less than 12. So what does that look like? 3 here, 12 there. So greater than 3 goes this way. 12 goes this way. It's an and, so we're looking for the intersection, which is right here. So we're parentheses 3 to 12 parentheses. And the reason why they're parentheses is because there are no equal signs on your inequalities. Okay, let's move to the or world. Start working on our ors. 6x minus 4 is less than 2x or negative 3x is less than or equal to negative 9. So solving that out gets us 6x. Oh, I didn't do anything. Let's try this again. Negative 4 is less than negative 4x. Dividing by negative 4 gets us 1. Flip the sign is greater than x. I'm going to rewrite that as x less than 1. It's the same thing, just flipping everything. Over here we get x is greater than, flip that sign, positive 3. So now on our graph, my smallest number is 1, largest number is 3. Now let's do our shading at 1, we're this way. At 3, we're bracket going that way. If this was an and, it would be no solution. But this is an or. So I'm going to do the union of the left and the right. So my left is negative infinity to 1. Union, my right is, oops, that should be a bracket, 3 to positive infinity. And that would be our final answer in interval notation. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Hopefully you got an answer of negative infinity, missed my comma there, to 1. Union 3 to infinity. So where does that come from? Here you get x is greater than 3. Here we get x plus 5 less than 6, so x is less than 1. On the number line, 1 smaller than 3. Shading-wise, 1 is that way. 3 is this way. So when you take the union of those, it's negative infinity to 1, union 3 to positive infinity. Good. All right, let's go through this one. Negative 4x plus 1 is less than 9, or negative 5x plus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 12. So again, solving that out. We get negative 4x is less than 8. Don't forget to flip your sign. Dividing by negative 4 gets us negative 2. Over here, negative 5x is greater than negative 15. Dividing, don't forget to flip your sign. Dividing by negative 5 gets us a positive 3. 
on our graph. Negative 2 goes on the left, 3 on the right. Do your shading. There's my 3 shading. Here's my 2 shading. If this was an AND, we would just be going from negative 2 to 3. But this is an OR, which means I'm taking the union of everything. Well, if I did a union of this and a union of this, it would include the whole entire number line, which means it's all real numbers. How do we write all real numbers in interval notation? Well, that's negative infinity to positive infinity. And there's our answer. Let's go ahead and do this one. Negative 4x plus 1. So again, we're doing the same thing. Just signs are different. Negative 4x is greater than 8. So we end up with x is less than negative 2. And then 5x is greater than or equal to negative 12. x is greater than or equal to not negative 12, negative 15. Didn't do my math right there. Gets us negative 3. Was I missing a negative there? I don't remember. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. So negative 2, negative 3, that should be over there. Negative 2 is smaller. All right, so negative 2 going this way. Negative 3 is going this way with a bracket. So again, because it is an or... The union of everything, we end up with negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. All right, try this one on your own. Oh, I didn't put an answer there. Okay, let's check your answer, see what you guys got. 3x is greater than or equal to 15, x is greater than or less than or equal to 5, or x is less than or equal to 7 minus 5 is 2. Graphing it, 2 here, 5 there. Bracket, shade. And then for the 5, it's bracket, shade. Ooh, what about this one? So for our or, we want to include everything, which means we will be going from negative infinity Two positive five. Did you get that? You did. Good job. If this was an and, if there was an and there instead of an or, then our answer would be just this area right here from negative infinity to positive two. Because ands, you want the intersection. Ors, you want everything. So go, just go to either the furthest right or the furthest left, depending on which way your arrows are going. Okay. Oh, last one. Here we go. Negative 2x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 11, or 4x minus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 27. Oops, just on highlighter mode. Negative 2x is greater than or equal to 6. X is greater... Oh, don't forget to flip your sign. Negative 3... 4x is greater than or equal to negative 20. x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Do not flip that sign because you divide it by a positive number. Smallest number on the left, largest number on the right. Do your shading. So shading there. Do your shading the other way. That's going to get us an all real numbers because it's an or. Okay, so we've gotten no solutions when our graphs have gone like this. So this is the, the cases of when you get no solutions. So when your graph is going like this and you have shading going in opposite directions and this is an and, then you would have a no solution. If it was an or, then you would do a union of it, right? Um, is there a way to get a no solution on an or? Most likely not. Because if we're doing everything included, then it would be everything that's included. Okay. 
I'm trying to think. I can't think of any. All right. That is it. Shoot any questions my way. Move on to your next task.